Cloud WC2. So as, as you probably have heard uh, from Sanjeeva's uh, session today, cloud is a big thing for WC2. So uh, cloud is now, we have our public cloud in basically all the major product areas of WC2. And, and then the smart analytics part that is not available as a public cloud service, it's already also available within managed cloud. And all of them are in managed cloud as well. So managed cloud is our dedicated cloud offering. Public cloud is the public shared. Uh, we've launched just recently. So public cloud has been around for just uh, two years now, uh, less than two years commercially. And it's already available in 12 different uh, data centers regions um, across the world. And uh, it's been, it got pretty much in some areas like API cloud, which has been there for the longest time, uh, is pretty much at, at feature parity with uh, on-premises local deployments with enterprise. There are some exceptions still, like custom reports and so on, but we are catching up very rapidly. Uh, and some things like API monetization, they're actually better in the cloud because it's already all pre-integrated and you can basically start charging immediately. And in the managed cloud, when I looked at the stats of our sales last year and just looked at the top 10 our biggest customers in 2016, five of them are actually in, in managed cloud. Five of them are cloud customers. So that's, that's how big cloud is for WSO2. So at, uh, in this session, what I will talk about is different deployment patterns and different ways that customers use cloud or not cloud, and how they choose where to use cloud, where to use local, and, and how they like how, how these local and cloud work together and how they move from cloud to local and, and so on. So that's basically what the session is going to be. I, I will not be kind of pitching the specific features of the cloud or not cloud, but I'll, I'll talk about scenarios and bigger picture of cloud basically being that delivery model, not, not a different product, but your, your way of figuring out whether to use it or not to use it. And so since there are obviously two choices, cloud and not cloud, and, and you can use it for production, not production, then there are like four stories, right? So it's two by two is four. Okay, so I'll, I'll start with like 100% cloud. So uh, we have obviously a lot of customers, probably like significant chunk, hard to say like whatever percentage is, but a lot of our customers are just 100% cloud. And uh, it's great that uh, Mifan, for example, was just talking about TFL, Transmit for London. Um, so they are a cloud customer. They're using our cloud service. It, it's all in WS2 cloud. And the reason they, they chose it, obviously, uh, Transport for London, it's a huge, huge organization, or sets of organization, right? London is one of the biggest cities in the world with one of the biggest public transportation systems, if, if not the biggest. Um, and uh, so why would they choose cloud, right? Because they would, they would have their own data centers, they would have their own IT. So the thing is that choosing cloud allows them to move very quickly and to iterate very quickly and add new projects very quickly. So it's not, it's not really kind of one organization with one project, right? They have their bus systems, their tube, and et cetera, et cetera. And they all need to work together, but they are still different teams. And they need to be able, able to, to get new projects up very quickly. So right now, because they're using W2 Cloud, um, our managed cloud service, it takes them uh, weeks to get new projects up and running. And it is important. So London, um, a year ago, in 2015, London was uh, number five most congested cities in the world. So in the, um, what's the name of the, there's uh, Einrix. Einrix, uh, uh, which is the organization that's compiling that, uh, uh, that list. And uh, Los Angeles is number one, by the way. So it is the worst traffic in the world officially is with, with LA, uh, south of here. Um, and that's where I am based, so I, I know. Uh, and London, so London was number five a year ago. So this year, London is actually number seven. So, and it's not, it's not just because the, other, the others got worse, but they actually got better. So people in London now, in just a year, they're spending less time in traffic than they spent a year ago. So it's, it's, and it's, it's a huge deal, right? Because that, that makes London more attractive and that's also lost productivity and that, that actually directly impacts 
the, the economics, directly impacts the efficiency of London as a city, as a place where people work and, and live. So it, it's a big deal. Getting there faster and quicker is, is a big deal. And um, uh, Transport for London guys are not on this conference, but if you go online and see the recording of their talk that they gave at our European event, then um, that's obviously highly recommended. Uh, a couple of other uh, cloud customers will be presenting here today, uh, Motorola and uh, State of Arizona, so you're very welcome to, to come there and, and talk to them about how they're using cloud and how cloud is helping them uh, move faster. I'll go to the next one. So. Uh, cloud being used for production and not cloud for non-production. So we, we have customers like that as well. So uh, one of the customers that I can think of is, for example, we have, we have a partner, uh, they're a system integrator, and what they are doing now is they're developing solutions for their customers using just local servers of WSO2. They just, it's open source product, and they, they, are, they know how to use them. Uh, they download them, they, they run them on their laptops and servers to do development. But then they don't, they're a system integrator. They don't want to be in the hosting business for that customer, right? So that they don't want to maintain the servers for the customer. So what they do is they, they do all the local customization, all the local de development, and then customer, they buy, I don't remember whether they are buying subscriptions for customers or, and, and charging more or customers are buying themselves. But that system integrator is then deploying these solutions to the WSO2 cloud, right? So then uh, everyone wins, right? So customer is getting a solution that's out, up in the cloud and it's running and they are happy and happily paying the, the system integrators for the, for the solution. And, and then WSO2 is hosting that. So the system integrator can do what they do best, develop the solutions, but then the customer is using that in the cloud, right? So that uh, that's the model that we, we are seeing. Cloud being used for non-production, so that's kind of the direct opposite. So that actually also makes sense. <laughs> and we, uh, because basically even if you're running your production in your data center, then it's still sometimes you benefit, and you can do that for a variety of reasons. Compliance, so you need like actual access to the server, or the server needs to be in the same data center for proximity reasons because it's an integration project or whatever, for whatever reasons. Uh, for example, we have um, a large customer from uh, healthcare uh, here in the US, and they, they are simply not allowed to use cloud for their, for their production for compliance reasons. Um, and then, but still, they have teams who are working on development and these teams, the dev and QC teams, need uh, the, the playground to be always available for them, right? So for them to be able to move quickly, they, from the get-go, from the moment they started the project, they use the cloud. So they immediately could give their development teams and their QA teams uh, access to the, to the system. And, and they could start being productive while IT guys have started working on the, on the production deployment that they will be running from, from now on. And so they could get uh, their own people going immediately while they could start working on the production. Uh, and um, in fact, uh, we, uh, we have been so successful with that that as Sanjiva mentioned during the keynote today, for API Cloud, we now have all of our API manager customers, whoever has enterprise subscription to enterprise, uh, to API manager, can get a basic starter, uh, like basic subscription to API cloud. And, and that is, so you can use that for whatever QA and as a playground, but also it's, it's cool because you can use the cloud uh, to see the latest and greatest, right? So suppose you are on, uh, whatever, on API manager 1.10 or 1.9 or something, and there's that new API manager coming, or that just came, like 2.0, 2.1, and you want to, to see what it is, you want to try it, you can just go to the cloud, and it's, it's the thing on the latest version, on the latest patch level, you can play there, and then upgrade your local thing. So it, it's, it's an easy thing to start using. And, um, yep. And, and just, again, and another example is that, again, we are 
as, um, as Anka mentioned, we are trying to, be, to use cloud-first approach in our development. So just today, Sanjeeva announced Ballerina. So Ballerina is already available in our integration cloud, right? So we basically, we are trying to keep our cloud on the, like, the immediate latest and greatest, right? So basically, the, the moment that Sanjeeva made the announcement, uh, one of the things that we did internally in the company with our internal sort of orchestration is make it available in the integration cloud. So that cloud is helping us be more agile, and kind of that's, that's where we put the, the latest and greatest technology. So non-cloud uh, is obviously not something that I should be talking about uh, in this session. So I'll talk about uh, people using non-cloud but still starting in the cloud. So the, the beauty, again, the beauty of WSO2 and why uh, my job at WSO2 uh, being in charge of our cloud is actually very cool in a sense that unlike many other companies, we are using the same products, right? So it's the same thing whether you download it as an open source, get enterprise subscription, or use it in the cloud, dedicated or not. It's the same code, right? The same product. So as Sanjeeva mentioned, there's no lock-in, right? At any point, say you're an API cloud, you have your APIs published in the cloud, and you decide that, hey, whatever, cloud is not the thing for me. You can export your APIs from the cloud and import in your local deployment. So for example, one of our, uh, uh, one of, uh, our customers, one of the government agencies in, uh, in New Zealand, so they started in the cloud, they used the cloud to prototype their APIs. They had to publish the APIs and get feedback on them. So they used the cloud for that, uh, to publish their prototypes of the APIs. They did that, they collected feedback, they um, they changed the APIs around, and these were just prototypes. But once they were happy with that, they moved to their own deployment. They started in the cloud, but could move to non-cloud very easily. And we, we are seeing, we actually saw, and then there was another customer just recently, again, uh, US, one of the US government agencies, did the same thing. So they, they used the cloud, they signed up for the cloud, then the internal security team told them that they should not be really using cloud, they should be using their own deployment for their compliance reasons, and again, they, they moved. It's, it's not a big deal. Cloud really helped them get familiar with the product really quickly, and then, yes, they, they could not be using cloud later on for their reasons, but again, it wasn't, wasn't a big deal. Uh, the point is that from WSO2 perspective, um, as, uh, Again, Asanka mentioned, cloud is a delivery channel, right? It's, it's not something that we view like a completely different thing. For us is that we as a company are providing that integration technology for you guys to do digital transformation within your company. And we need to provide it the way that works best for you. And for some people, it would be uh, their local installation. For some, it would be public shared cloud and for some it would be a dedicated model. And we support all of them, and our goal is to make sure that, in, in different combinations, as I mentioned. So whatever is the scenario that works for you, we are here to provide the service and, and the technology. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically the way that we see it, and, uh, and that's, that's the end of my... Uh